Well, I forgot to go and film a tractor hunt intro, so we're just going to go and do it right here, live on site, picking up. We got a Troy built here that we're going to go and grab today. It's got a 20 horsepower Courage in it. There's no background information on this machine. It just is what it is. Four flat tires, but luckily we picked up a freebie the other day. And we should be able to pull those tires off of there. But the other interesting thing that we're going to go and grab today is over here in the back of the truck. It's a John Deere 111. And I was thoroughly expecting this to be totally trashed. I was not expecting it to be in this kind of condition. And the reason why I wanted it is because a John Deere 111 has five lug rear tires and it is a 801 transmission in the rear which is in the same class as the peerless 820s so i picked this up because i wanted the transmission for doing racing although i haven't quite decided whether maybe this thing needs to get turned into something i don't know we'll see <laughs> downhill race it Wrong way. Alright. Ready? Yep, I'm already filming. Okay. Is it on? Yep, there we go. Wow. Alright, now we'll fill it up and do the other side. Alright, we got that unloaded next to the four post lift so we can get it on there tomorrow. We got that unloaded over there out of the way because I still can't bring myself to decide what I want to do with it. And we ended up with a couple of other freebies while we were there. We got a solid cast iron front axle that came off of a Husqvarna. And a 42 inch deck. The type with the front engagement. So this one's probably out of a 2000s era series but that's still moving and the brake is still moving and the blades even turn over nicely so that is a savable unit well the fronts didn't hold so i got this junkyard set of already tubed mtd front tires here and I've got another set of rear tires there in case they don't end up holding up. But what I wanted to point out here was I thought this was interesting. So I don't know if you can see it, but that washer has a tab in it to be able to hold it so that it binds against this cotter pin. I just thought that was interesting. I haven't seen that before. Maybe this Super Bronco has some interesting things to it after all. I thought it was just going to be another generic MTD, but it seems to have a few features in order to point out. I get asked often from the southern people about frost heaving and what I'm talking about. See how this is higher and it comes down and then goes over and then comes up? That's because there's still frost in that section that hasn't let off and frost in this section that hasn't let off. But right here where there was salt and stuff, it already dried out and sunk back down. In about three weeks, all of that is gonna be level at the exact same height. That's what frost heaving is up here in Maine and why it is stuff like this doesn't tend to last very long or stay level. So for the giggles of it, I figured before we loaded it up onto the lift, we'd go and throw a battery into it. But before we throw a battery in, I wanted to point out that this is the time when you want to be checking your belt in one of these very drive MTDs. So we pop that out and we set that off to the side. And while we're here, this is all I do in order to be able to clean up these ends. I just take a 
drill and I throw on one of those and I just go and I call it good. But anyways, if we come down here, let me see if I can get my phone into here. So right there, we can see that this belt here is toast. The sides are entirely gone on it. So this is your upper very dry belt. And this is your lower very dry belt, which also is very toasted. Now, this should be loose, okay? When you push down your pedal up front, it tightens this up in order to go. This should be nice and tight, and this should be able to move just a little bit. You should be able to tug on it, see, like that, and make that move. If these have been sitting, they'll rust right in this pivot point here, and you have to go and undo them and put them back together. Whatever you do, don't lose that bolt. It's proprietary, and no, they don't sell it. Over here, that is your very drive, and it's two height, so there's a pulley section on top and a pulley section on bottom, and what you can't see is there is a pulley in the middle, and it's split and you want to spin this whole thing a couple of times and yep did you hear that i don't know if you caught that on camera but that was rust weld breaking loose and so now it is spinning nice and freely look i can move it with one finger when before i had to use my whole hand so now that's broken loose and this is the stupid fuse that MTD loves to have hidden underneath their battery case. So we're gonna pull that and we're gonna double check it while we got the battery out. Because I have seen machines that are dead and all it is is that hidden fuse that you never would have known about. So there we go. I'm gonna take our Popo Man drill here. I really like this drill. It's worked out really nice. And I'm debating getting their impact. I haven't quite decided yet. So we're going to clean those up, throw the battery in, and just for the snots and giggles of it, we're going to see if it'll turn over. All right, for the giggles of it, test fire, take one. I don't know if you can see that, but that key is rather bent. That's pretty bad. We're going to use the spare. Okay, so on these, the brake has to be all the way down. Well, that tried to fire. Okay, I would say our next step is we go ahead and we boost the snot out of the battery to give it a little bit more gumption, just in case it's rust welded up front. And we give it some gas and we see what it does. Now the question is, I don't know if this will crank if I put the parking brake on. So let's try that before we go any further. Yes, it will. So we need more battery. We'll be right back. All right, so we got some gas we're gonna go and put in. Let's see what kind of condition we've got gas in here. Actually, it smells like somebody put some gas in in order to try and start this thing. It smells a little watered down though, so I'm not quite sure about that. We'll check the oil to make sure it doesn't have a ton of gas in it in order to show the needle being stuck. Oil's definitely old, but doesn't smell of gas. By the way, I ran the numbers on this particular machine. This is a 2009 model. Um, these are still basically in production to this day at Home Depot and a couple of other places. So at this point, motor turns, does not sound the healthiest ever but it's got a compression stroke right there. So we've got our massive overkill Hulkman here. These things are about a hundred bucks and they're 
like 2,000 cranking amp, really worth it. So we're going to hook that up and see what happens next. We've got our Hulk man on, we've got some sort of gas in the tank, and choke on. I'm not sure that I hear any kind of firing going on. So I think what we're going to do at this point is I'm going to get the hood off out of our way and we're going to check and see if the spark plug actually is firing. Well, this is downright dumb. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. Look, there's no connection to disconnect there. That cable goes all the way through there, through that, up and over to there. You literally have to rip out the entire wiring harness and set it aside. That's just plain stupid. And that would be more parts showing up for the dozer project. Yahoo! So if you're looking for an engine with good serviceability and stuff, a Kohler single twin cam is probably not what you want. Because just to be able to check the spark plug, you have to rip this whole thing off, which by the way is still tied in with your lighting system. There we go. And now we can get to the spark plug and our hidden fuel pump. So on one of these twin cams, your coil is over here, your pump is hidden underneath here, and your spark plug is all the way in there. So you can't manage to do anything to test it without taking off the cover, no matter what. Which luckily isn't too bad, it's just one, two, three, four, eight millimeters, but it's still rather irritating. Well, this guy's getting evicted. One of these days I'm going to get bit. I'm going to go and reach into one of those and somebody's going to be home. Here. So here's the condition we have here. You can see that is utterly chewed up and probably was grounding out on something. But it looks as if the coil kill wire actually was in good condition. But if we come over here, you can see that that was chewed through. So we're going to have to pull the spark plug and see if that actually even fires. Now, the other problem we have is this, which is why we have some PB blaster, a three-quarter inch deep socket, and a thumpet stick. What happens is people try to start these up, they kill the battery, and it jams in the top position. Then this fills with water and it rusts the whole thing solid. This should not be on here. It should be down. So we're going to go and give it a thump and we're going to see if we get lucky and it comes loose. Put you in the camera holder here. That way you guys can watch and see if I cry when I end up snapping off the studs at the bottom of this. So these studs are notorious for snapping off. They suck. So this is either going to work or I'm going to snap a stud and I'm going to cry or nothing's going to happen.
and it's going down. So we'll rotate the engine a little bit and see if it, there it goes. And all the way down, we got lucky it came loose. So we're gonna coat the snot out of that and hope it doesn't do it again. There we go. That one doesn't look too bad. I'll clean it up in five seconds with a wire bristle brush and then we'll do a spark test. Okay, spark test, break on, take one. Well, I got headlights, that's interesting. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I do have spark coming out of there. It's not a very strong one, but I do have them. Although, the brake lights, I mean the running lights turning on is kind of interesting. All right, so we got spark. Let's see what's next. All right, so basically, if you got spark, then your next thing is do you have air and do you have fuel? Now, if your carburetor manages to get a needle valve stuck, it can drain all the fuel right directly onto the fuel filter, and you'll find that the whole thing is just kind of corroded and melted and whatever. So we're going to rip this off and see what kind of condition we're in. It's actually in pretty good condition, other than somebody not putting that edge on correctly. But that filter there has seen its fair share of saving things from going in there. Yeah, that's coated in oil, most likely wasn't flowing anything whatsoever. So we're gonna order up a set of these and we'll go and replace them. And things that I talk about in here, like the fuel pump, the starter, stuff like that, I'll make sure to have links for this kind of stuff in the description. So at this point, we can check. I'll grab the camera here. At this point, we can clean this out and we can check down here and we can make sure that that choke is actually fully closed and everything and check to see whether there's gas flowing out of here. I don't see any gas flowing out, but on these bigger single cylinders, this right here, the solenoid on the bottom, is notorious for leaking and blowing out this gasket. Oh, right there. That whole bottom is leaking gas like a sieve. So... That right there is probably leaking, which means I'm going to have to go and pull it, tighten it up, and clean it. But just for the heck of it, you know, having leaking gas is nice and safe. We'll squirt some in with our little syrup bottle here, and we'll see if this thing will decide to actually fire up. Okay, full choke, bottle baby startup, take one. Well, it tried to run on its own gas. Let's give it full choke and let's see if it'll pull its own gas in and run. Yeah, that carburetor is utterly just stupid at this point. Um, so we're going to grab a 10 millimeter and we're going to go and take those off. We're going to pop this and pull that carburetor out of there and see what the inside looks like. 
Want to see why Kohler singles love to catch themselves on fire? This is the wiring. That little itty bitty tiny two strands of wire is what was running that carb solenoid. This is why Kohler singles love to light themselves on fire. All right, so I wanted to show you this. This is an actual Waldeboro carb. So this is legit, and somebody has already replaced the bottom of it. And my bet would be they were trying to fix that these just plain do not seal up or snot. And there is our beautiful solenoid. That one little itty bitty strand was all that was setting this thing off. Gotta love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this off. We're going to clamp this right into the vise, and we're going to cut that off because we don't live in California. So we don't need that stupidity in our life. There. Main approved. So, why is the solenoid out? Because on an MTD chassis, some brilliant engineering moron decided that it was a good idea to make it so that you have to remove the solenoid valve to get it past the frame rail. So, this can go away now. That's our chassis ground whatever. And of course it's going to be a twit just because it's on film. But you just spin it around and get rid of that. And we'll tap this and get it to come loose. There it goes. Oh yeah. Uh, it's got plenty of Obami gas left over in it. Look, it literally ate the gasket out of it. Yep. I can't even get the pin out. It's stuck. Some of these have a tap inside. We'll see if this happens to be one of them. And be really careful once you get it started, because that dumb thing will shoot straight at you, bounce off, and it will end up wherever it decides it's ending up. There we go. Now, if we pull this off, there's our needle valve, and we're checking to make sure, if I can get it in there, we're checking to make sure that point is square, it's straight, it's nice. On the rubber tip ones, they tend to wear out, and then they just kind of crack right off. So, more Obami leftover splooge. And there's where it ate the gasket. So we'll see what I can do. We'll see if I can clean it up. You need to come down in here and clean out that Venturi really good. And you need to clean out the needle valve hole in here. But it had gas actually flowing into it in order to run the motor. So I'm going to assume the passage here is clean, but we need to blow out from here to here and make sure. So I got this all cleaned up and I'm about to go and put it all together. 
And I wanted to point out the gasket on that is literally the exact same gasket as a Briggs 693981. You can buy these things by the 15 pack and they universally fit in tons of different carbs. So don't ever pay Kohler price for this. Buy these 15 packs. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. Hi, right, ready for the stupidest carburetor installation ever because MTD? So, you get the top installed, you get the rod, your choke, and your throttle, and then what you do is you get it onto the two studs, you, you grip over the top, you put your thumb on the bottom, and you unscrew your solenoid, slide it back to the block, Once you get it lined up, because that stud floats, so while holding it with your thumb, you now reach underneath and screw your solenoid in. And for the next question, the solenoid is a half inch. Whatever that is in European, I got no idea. And yes, dear Virginia, we do hope there is a place in hell for engineers. So, at this point, we've got our gas tank vacuum that goes right there. And we've got our gas line that goes right here. And we'll put our box on. We'll see if this thing will crank up. That's not a happy noise. Let's try one more time before we go try and find something in the scrapyard. See if we can drive it up on there. What do you think? Am I gonna get one more or did I screw myself over turning it off? to be replaced but let's find out what's up with this deck yeah I'm sure that was definitely helping the blades quite a bit and that might explain some of the dents on the front yeah that probably explains why it is the left looks like somebody ran into something that can's been there a while. Well, there's that. Let's see if we can get underneath here. 
So that blade is solid, not moving, and definitely seen its fair share of rocks. That blade is also quite solid. So we're going to grab some leather gloves and reef on these blades a bit and see if anything will come loose. Yeah, I just went to reach up here in order to break out this and look what I just found. Holy cow. Look, that actually still spins. I really bet somebody was probably actually still mowing with it like that. That's crazy. Yeah, that is stuck. That is stuck. Right, I'm going to shift this board forward. Yeah, that's not moving anytime soon. So... We're going to go and try and see if one of these is able to come loose and pull this belt because we already found that the dry belt was rust welded so we're going to pull this and see if it'll come loose well it's funny i actually bought these gloves for welding and i have never once actually used them for welding all right so let's go back and forth with this and we're looking to see if this will move Oh, there we go. We got movement. Oh, can't get it going that way. We got something to break free in that direction. Alright, we'll go on the other side, see if we can break that side. The problem is getting to that stupid center one practically impossible yeah this one's the one that's definitely not happy there it goes it moved okay and there goes the center one and it was rust welded big time there we go there so we need to figure out which one of these was actually tensioner pulley which the tensioner pulley should be this one should be moving yeah there it goes so we need to figure out pulling that apart and whatever moves in order to go back and forth with it but that's all cleaned up and spins up now so I'm going to hunt around in my pile of goodies and see if I can find anything that's the same size as that. I wonder if this is caused by hard lemonade drinking. What do you guys think? That's supposed to be connected right there. I don't know what they hit on that left side, but there's random dented stuff all through there. See that whole area there? This is bent. So, I'll have to take a hammer to that and give it some loving fixings, but we'll see. Start of day two. So, both of the back tires ended up going flat overnight, which was expected. And as you can see, we got that pulley swapped in. Now, what's interesting to note is that pulley, that pulley, and the pulley in back are all exactly the same size. Um, they sell these two pulleys as a kit. Um, I'll post up a link down below for those. I'm going to end up probably doing the uh, blades on this. I'll do a video on that at some point. And the dry belts I'll definitely be doing a how-to video on later. But what I wanted to get to right now was this. This is what I took off of there. And this is what it should look like. I was going to attempt to go and beat this one into submission and weld it back together. But I decided that this one off of the dragster bug, which no longer needs its mowing deck, is probably a better idea. Although what this is interesting to note and cool to 
point out is that this came off of a 42 inch deck and this came off of a 46. So they made them universal as far as the front mounts are concerned. So that's a good thing to find. So let's see, got to beat this back into where it ought to be and go from there. I'm sure those of you that have been following my channel for a while are going to go and immediately notice this thing is still horrifically grungy. Needs a carburetor. Needs a couple of deck belts. Definitely needs both drive belts. And when I went to go hook up my power washer, I turned on the faucet line in the house and exploded the pipe right at where the faucet comes out through the sidewall. So I didn't get a chance to power wash it. So we're going to work on doing a couple of how-to videos on this thing, and you guys will see it in the future. All fixed up, ready to go. Oh, and I've got to go and do both front tires. So, note here, MTD style front rims are offset about a half of an inch more than Craftsman, Husqvarna, most other rims. So these are literally on here just long enough to do this video for you guys, and then I'm ripping them off because they rub in a tight corner. So, MTD rims, if you ever want to gain yourself about a half an inch to each side on the front of your Craftsman, switch over to MTD rims. Although I don't recommend it because plastic bushings are stupid and a waste of time, but it is what it is. Um, deck works good, needs some blades. What do I think this machine is worth? In my market up here in Maine, in a normal year, I would probably list this somewhere around seven to 800. The large 46 inch three blade deck and all said and tuned up and done, I will probably have close to about 300 into it by the time I get it to the point that I'll sell it. Um, dry belts, you always want to have done on machines you're selling. Unless the belt obviously was new by the previous owner, always do dry belts. People expect to burn out a deck belt they get pissed off if they burn out a dry belt. Anyways, guys, so I hate doing plumbing, but apparently that's what I need to do. And there will be some more tractor hunting footage coming up. Unfortunately, we got about 28 degree weather showing up in about four days from now. So I'm gonna work as fast as I can to finish one more tractor hunt video for you guys. And then it'll probably have to wait for a few days. So we'll catch you next time.